we've arrived at my uh, composting toilet that um, I made a couple of years ago now. And first of all, I made the frame and then I split all the shingles for it afterwards. I built this composting toilet with just four oak posts that are just sitting on the ground. I didn't want to put it in the ground because in the UK we're not really allowed to put foundations or any footings down for anything. So everything has to just be temporary. So this is a temporary structure that's just sitting on the ground. Um, four oak posts and then a wooden frame and then a couple of plates that hold the hazel. The door is something that I found in my workshop and I cut it down. And so what we've got is a couple of little handles and then inside is my throne. <laughs> the palace. <laughs> the palace. I like the toilet roll holder there that you've got, the way yeah. you've done it. Oh yeah, a little bird's nest up there. They're actually nesting in it now. Is that fresh now? Is that isn't it being used, that yeah. nest? Wow. Yeah, because awesome. I found oh, some yeah. on the floor and they're, they're pooping down here. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got... That is brilliant. On. So this is my... flush. So once we've been... Took a bit of sawdust on the top. Adios. And that's where you put your tissue and then it gets burnt in the fire. Oh, I see. So, so that only what goes in there is ash. This is these are the um, shavings, the ash shavings from when I've been machining up my trees. So whenever I machine up the trees and create a pile of sawdust, I um, bag it up and keep it for the toilet. So that goes into the ground? No, it, it doesn't. Or into the bucket. Just goes into so the this bucket. is just a bucket in here. And then I've got a compost heap just over there. But I'm not sure I'm ever going to use it, uh, just because it can be quite dangerous to use human manure if you haven't yeah, I suppose. heated it properly. It has to go through a certain heat treatment to, to get rid of certain pathogens and, and bacteria that we yeah. contain. I probably won't use it for growing vegetables, but I will use it um, to put around the trees, newly planted trees, things like that. Yeah. Because um, it will still give them nutrients. It will still give them nutrients, yeah, yeah. but you're just not for eating. And yeah. just your standard roof buttons to get your, so yeah, to, to get your uniform pattern. Buttons, which made it a bit easier because that would have been a lot of hazel to split. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I used the standard roof button on top of the hazel. And it seems to work really well. And then round the back, I noticed is there, there's something oh, yeah, around the back as well. Around the back is uh, the washroom. This is uh, yeah, brilliant. So when we do our charcoal making or we stay over, we've got somewhere to keep ourselves clean and do our washing up. And that just soaks down, that just goes into a soak away in the ground because um, it's only a bit of grey water. You yeah. don't use anything, you only use eco, eco products. Um, so nothing bad goes into the environment because I really don't want to be putting damaging chemicals in the woodland. Well, these are all boards that I machined up on a, a chainsaw mill. So when I first came here, I bought myself a chainsaw mill and machined up all this ash was dead. So I'm just utilizing it any way I can, really. That's a serious amount of shingles as well. It's a lot. You were saying you need, it gave you tennis elbow. Yeah, it does, it does hurt. <laughs> when you make this many shingles, it hurts. <laughs> You're using that Thor hammer. I'm yeah. not built like Thor. So, uh, <laughs> Using a Thor hammer every yeah. day, all day for months at a time is <laughs> yeah, hard work. It is, yeah, I bet. <laughs> what an awesome structure, though. Thank you, Mike. Very, very cool. And it's blended in so well with it's that really the nice, way yeah, it's it um, sits so nicely. And it will just rot it away. I'll leave it here, and eventually it will just sink into the ground and disappear. Um, so these are ash shingles, and these are what I made to cover this because I had mostly ash trees, so that's what I'm using. And these shingles, these have been here for two years. Not one of them has dropped. Um, they did shrink a little bit because when I made them, they were all green. So what you see are maybe between five and 10 mil gaps in between them. Um, some more, some less, but it doesn't make any difference to the function of the roof. And uh, if you look at these shingles, they're all just nailed on with one single nail. Um, the reason for that being that when you nail them on with one nail they can shrink and expand and shrink and 
they don't split. Whereas if you put two nails in, when they shrink, it would split the shingle and then you lose half of it. Half of it would drop out because it would split where the, one of the nails went in. So one nail would stay, one, one nail hole would split. So always single nail in the top onto the whatever you're nailing onto. But these have lasted really well. They discolour nicely, um, but they're still as solid and as good as they were in the day I made them. So this is why I, if, if it was a shallow pitch, I would have used something that was a bit more durable outside. But with a steep pitch like this, no, no rain sits on it, um, nothing sits on it, so it, it, it just washes everything off, therefore it doesn't rot. So you can get away with using things like birch or ash and woods that aren't really meant for outside when you're using them in this way.